Who is your favorite influencer? Who is your favorite influencer, oh, Danny? Oh my, that's a trap question. That's is a it? trap question? Why is that a trap question? Because <laughs> you're an influencer, aren't you? I don't have to be your favorite influencer. You're my favorite personal influencer. All right, there you I go. Like, Aww. I, like, I like you the best. Ah, there's love. Uh, <laughs> but I actually, my very first one, I think, was actually Eric Thomas. Oh, okay. Eric, Eric Thomas. Yeah, yeah, Eric Thomas and his uh, famous uh, speech. Um, yeah. The, the drowning the kid one. Yeah, yeah. So that, that one got me a lot when I was growing up. Um, and then, obviously, Gary Vee came into the picture in yeah. my life by then. So Gary Vee played a big part. And then um, now I'm with you. So now I got your influence every day. There you go, right? Every day. Every day. Pushing me. Every much. day, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, who would I pick? I think early on, as a, as a speaker, a young Les Brown is my hero. I love mm -hmm. young Les Brown. But I don't know that he's really an influencer. It's probably not what the question was. Um, so young Les Brown, and then now influencers. I would probably put it between Gary and Tom. I like Gary and Tom. Yeah, yeah. Gary's got the the. I mean, Tom's got the hustle and all that stuff too. Yeah. Gary just yells more. Gary's yeah. in your face and yells yeah, more. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Oh, actually, you know what? My my most recently found one was David Goggins. Oh, Goggins I is. I love Goggins. Goggins is. He's hardcore. But he's not so really an influencer. No, but he's inspiring. Does that count? I guess. I guess. I mean, he has a book. He has a book dropping. Oh, does he? Next month. Oh. Yeah, coming out. Oh, I gotta check that First out. First book. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, uh, Tom, what I love about Tom is he's always showing his early days. Yeah. And like his goofy ears and. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and the, everybody's only pumping out like how good they are and yeah. he's showing how much he sucked. Yeah. And then when he launched his comic book, uh, he's showing pictures of him setting up the booth himself. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, yeah. like he's still, he's made- He's, he's so humble. He's like, made he his money and- humble. Yeah, and yeah. he is humble, but you know, Gary's humble too. Gary's very humble, I like, that's what I like about him. But, but Tom will show the humbleness. Yeah, He'll yeah, show that's it true. Where, where people will ridicule him that's true. Uh, say, well, why are you setting that up? You got all this money. What are you doing? Are you broke? Yeah. Or like, man, look at those goofy ears. Like you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that little that extra little bit about Tom is. Whereas Goggins is very like tough guy, man of steel. Yeah, yeah. Goggins like, is like you're weak if you don't do this yeah. type of thing, which they have their place. And so here's board. the thing. I think I think I like Gary for YouTube, but I like Tom for Instagram. Yeah, no, I, I can, I can that's, see that's that. What I would, yeah, I would, yeah. That's where I would go. Because Tom yeah. has to show that side on YouTube. Yeah. Tom has the, he's got his interviews, which are always great. Yeah. And then he's got his, um, uh, his yelling, like he yell, his motivational yeah, yeah. like rants. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. But he has to show that, that other side. So yeah. I, like, I like Tom, Tom Bilyeu, Instagram. Amazing. And Gary V, YouTube. My favorite network. Too. Tips on how to prioritize tasks, Danny. Okay. What do you got? You want me to start? Of course. Time? This is okay. the Danny Nevin show. Wow. Danny's first, <laughs> and then Evan. That's only because it's alphabetical. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. We just decided. Um, prioritize tasks. Well, they're all important because I think when you love something, you're passionate about it, everything's important. Oh, dude, we haven't even plugged in the microphone. Oh, so no one can hear us. Holy crap! Watch our phones. Like the phone's like right there. Right? I know, I know. But come on, we need clear audio. <laughs> hey. This, this is the this, this is, is the this Danny the best. Nevin show. Is how, how we roll. This is the best. Okay, there we go. Is that better for everyone? Or? Okay. I'm assuming it's better. Yeah, no, it should be way, it should be way clearer now. Okay, okay, okay. So okay. yeah, like I said, I think everything is um, important. Every little thing is important. Um, in terms of priority, honestly, I think it's just a matter of just getting down and doing it. I don't think... Okay, but you have a list, like you have a list. I always have a list, yeah. yeah. So we've got, we've got a bunch of stuff we have to do before we even we leave. Yeah, but I don't... Like, how do you prioritize besides me saying, hey Danny, how's this project coming along? Like, just, how, do it. That's it. Like you literally just do it. Like I, I go home. I'm like, oh. But okay. how do you know what to do? If you've got 20 things, why do you pick? The, this is what I'm gonna work on tonight. You gotta pick one, and you just gotta do it. But how do you pick that one? Well, it depends what you're doing, right? So for me, okay, it's video editing. There's video editing, and then there's um, like sorting and 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 doing all that, like preparing footage and backing up footage and organizing footage. So there's a lot of different steps. Yeah. Right? And you have so different projects with different, different deadlines. Projects, so what I have to do is pick one project. Right. But and I have to be like, what, what's just based off of deadlines. Deadlines. Really? Yeah. At the end of the day. Like, do you set your own deadlines or it's all... Oh, all I, I always... I, well, there's always deadlines given to me. Yeah. But then I would always, always pick a deadline faster than that. Like I always wanted to finish 
a little bit earlier than I'm supposed to. Okay. Because then that allows me to um, makes prioritizing easier when you're not always on the edge. Right. And you're always like picking things, you know, done last minute. Right. Type of thing. So. Okay. So most of those deadlines are 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 customer driven, right? Like exactly. hey, Danny, a we need a video by customer Tuesday. Driven. <clears throat> but then you have your own, which you should always put ahead of your your customers. Right, uh, but that's still a customer driven deadline, right? right? Like it's we need this video done by Tuesday, so you want to get it done by Sunday. Exactly, yeah. But the who who decided Tuesday was still the client. Yeah. How how do you fit your own your own other stuff in the schedule? So like you're gonna so part of our deal was you're gonna make your own movie. Yeah. How yeah. are we gonna fit that in? I mean, we've yeah. got our tour coming up of and course. that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. But then we get back. Yeah. How are you gonna fit in? I think I think it's just you have to prioritize your life, like in terms of everything else outside of what you're supposed to do. Okay. Right. If you prioritize that, it makes your job much easier. So but how do you, I, how do I prioritize my life? I think it's something where like you just have to you have to plan ahead. You have to either create a schedule. Some people like to write it down. Some people like to. I don't know whatever ways people do it, right? Um, for me, I like to go week by week, right? So in that week, I'm a, more of a of a tell myself thing type of guy. So every morning, I tell mean? myself like, you know, remember Tuesday you have this, Wednesday you have this, Thursday you have this, Friday you have this. So, wait, so you wake up and you and you say, and hey, I and I always tell myself, what do I have today, and what do I have tomorrow, what do I have the next day, and then the for next the week, morning, yeah, for a week. I always you do look it. at what you're doing for the week and All you, the you tell you every day is how you start your day. All the time. Wow. That's wild, okay. So then I go Wednesday, and I'm like, what do I have today? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, okay. Right? And then it's just like, it's constant. For me, writing things down, I lose pieces of paper all the time. Okay. So that doesn't work for me. Or like, <laughs> if it's in a book, I won't open it, because I don't know where the book is. Right? If I don't find it in the first 30 seconds, forget about it. <laughs> like, so so how do you remember what you did, what you, what's I'm coming always, up? I never stop. It's just up here? Uh, yeah, I mean, you so can So you wake it, up this morning, and you're like, okay, it's Monday. I gotta, this is what I got to do. I got to come to Evan. And then Tuesday, this is okay. what I'm going to do. Wednesday, this is what I'm going to do. Thursday. From memory. You sitting like, like are you lying in bed? You thinking about this? I never stop thinking about it. But it's like this, I know I know it's crazy. But like, it's from the moment you wake up, but... you're thinking, "Here's what I need to do this week." Yes, absolutely. And it's from memory. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. wild. But like, again, like my life is very simple. Like Nina asked me yesterday night, yeah. what my hobbies were, and I had right. no answers. Right. Right. So like, I either work, work out, sleep, or eat. And like I, that's all I do. So like. For me, I don't crowd my life with a lot of other things. Okay. So it's it's easier for me to do that, right? Whereas I know I understand people have children, people have families, they have priorities with other things, and it's a little bit more difficult. I can't answer for that because yeah. I, I, never, I don't have that. So for me, it's easier for me to do that. Like it's nonstop for me. That's how I operate. But for me, I like like I said, if you prioritize your life outside of work, which you need to do, right? You need to have a balance of both. Then prioritizing your work. It is much easier, and you got to sacrifice a little bit on both in order to make it work. So I like having different things on different days. I think you need to schedule for success, where you need to understand that your to-do list will never, will never fully go away. Yeah. Your ideas list will just continue to just balloon. Keep going, yeah. We'll, we'll never, you'll never hit everything It'll on your ideas list. Than your... Yeah, and as you have more success, you'll get more ideas. Exactly. Yeah. And so, I understand <laughs> the challenge of how do I pick on my ideas list. Right, so here's what I do. One, I have a different task on a different day. So Monday is my mentoring day, so I'm working with the people on my team to help them get better. As you build a company, I've got 24 people on my team now, uh, you recognize that your contribution isn't as strong as everybody else in the business. So individually, yes, I bring the most, but collectively, my team does way more than I do. And so the more they're growing, the better the business grows. So Monday's mentoring day. Tuesday, I'm spending the whole day doing YouTube stuff. Uh, Wednesday is project day. I'm launching my two new books and working on the tour. Thursday is public facing day. Friday is CEO. So public facing day is interviews, hangouts, podcasts. Friday is CEO day, working on big projects to grow the business. Saturday is husband and wife time, spending the time with Nina, planning surprises for her all day. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday is family admin day, mm -hmm. shopping, cleaning up, mm -hmm. and admin stuff for the family. And then I repeat. And so that, when I look at it on a macro, I look down and like that is something that I'm excited by. So these are the big things that are happening in my life and I always design my schedule around it. Mm -hmm. Then within it, how do I pick? You know, so when I'm doing YouTube, great, I have to make my 20 whatever videos a week, so I'm sitting there recording. But then I'm doing experiments on thumbnails and titles and new series mm -hmm. and trying to do new things always for the channel to make it blow up and grow. 
uh, and also just exciting. But like, it's nice to try different things for myself. And I just picked the idea that I like the most. You yeah. know, like I have some that I have to get done. So like here's our schedule for YouTube, and I have to make my top tens, my espressos, and whatever. And then the rest of the day is going to be YouTube stuff. I'll just look at my list of ideas and say. That one I like. <laughs> right? Like yeah. the ones that you feel most connected to, even in the moment, are the ones that you'll bring the, the best energy to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so you might have you might have a list of all sorts of different editing techniques mm -hmm. that you've seen from Netflix yeah, yeah. docs. Yeah. It's okay, you know what? I want to try that one today. All the time, yeah. And exactly, like you, just, yeah. you pick that one and you go. Yeah, yeah. So I think, I think when you wake up and you have no idea what to do, I think that actually is not great. I think, yeah. for, for, I think having some structure is good for you. I think, yeah. I think, I think the people who hate structure need, need, if you get some structure, it would actually save your life and make you a lot happier. Mm -hmm. And the people who are overstructured need to have a little bit of openness and some variety in their schedule. Mm -hmm. So I think if you can sit down and look at a macro for your week, what do I want to do on different days? And then within it, there will be deadlines, there will be some projects you have to work on, but then you have some freedom to pick. I like that idea, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go chase it. Yeah. The faster you can go from idea to testing it, trying it. The better, yeah. The better, yeah. The better, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Double down, yeah. double down on something that you're good at getting some momentum with, or diversify. What do you think? Oh man, that's your specialty, but I'll give my opinion. Danny always goes first. <laughs> it's the Danny and Evan show. I'll give my opinion, but <laughs> Danny and Evan he's show. He's a specialist in this in this regard. Um, I, I guess I can kind of relate to my genre in terms of my industry being in the videography business. Um, personally, I think you need to double down on 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 what your niche is. So as a videographer, like. I, I, at first, I tried to challenge myself by saying, I'm going to do weddings, and I'm going to do sports, and then I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do short films. And then it just became so big because there's so many different little differences in everything that you do that when you try to do everything at once, it's easy to burn out and easy to, to just be overwhelmed. So I think it's best to just find your niche, start with that, build your skills within that niche, and then, let, and then expand into other things as you get better. Yeah, I think people diversify themselves out of a business. Yeah. I think... I think diversification is a fantastic investment strategy, mm -hmm. but it sucks as an entrepreneurship strategy. For yeah. everybody who's trying to build multiple streams of income and they haven't even built one yet, yeah. it's yeah. a losing it's a losing game. I agree. It's a losing I mindset. Agree. Like yep. build your one stream and make it awesome and then worry about building a second stream. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think everybody you know, what social media network should I start on? And they try to be everywhere. And then you do all of them really poorly. Yeah, yeah. To think that you can run a business and then also have a YouTube channel and Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat and Facebook and LinkedIn and Pinterest. And you can't. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, but it's going to be garbage everywhere. Mm -hmm. Pick one where, you're, where one, your audience is and two, you feel most connected to and then go all in on that. So it was YouTube for me. I've always had one. I mean, I... I've had my history, but YouTube is my main thing right now. And now I'm starting to get into Instagram, Instagram yeah. a little hardcore. Mm -hmm. But I've got 24 people on my team, right? Like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to do everything all myself. Mm -hmm. And I think that applies not just to social media, but to the business. Yeah. If you're trying to take on every single customer, if you're trying to serve every industry, if you're, you just diversify yourself out of a business. Mm -hmm. Most people diversify themselves out of the business. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite quotes on this is from Andrew Carnegie, who is the richest man in America, who said, put all your eggs in one basket and then watch that basket. And I think when it's your business, so it's not just relying on somebody else, but like it's your business, then diversification is not the best strategy. Diversification is a great investment strategy. Don't worry about building multiple streams of income until you've built one and made it awesome. Mm -hmm. Then you can worry about the next. That I think goes back to the first question of prioritizing, right? It's going to be so much harder to prioritize when you have to worry about your YouTube video, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever it is you're doing, all of it. You're just going to, you're going to be too, it's going to be too much. Yeah. I mean, I'm still, I'm focused on those two. And it's and, a lot. And it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. To yeah. do it well. Yeah. Like before setting up and going live, I'm, I'm on my phone answering Instagram DMs because yeah. I'm already... I'm already feeling massively behind yeah. being able to answer everybody's Instagram DM. Mm -hmm. So if, if I'm struggling to make it quality 
and I'm not looking at the next thing yet. Whoever asked the question, like, yeah, what's your excuse? Yeah. Right. And I think if you can, if you can, and people say, okay, well, what happens when Instagram goes away? What happens when YouTube goes away? Like you're putting all your eggs in one basket in the YouTube basket and then it disappears. It's the wrong way to look at it because one, you've built skills, mm -hmm. you've built skill set, right? And two, you've built a brand name that is transferable. So what happened when Vine went away? Well, the Paul brothers came to YouTube and destroyed it. You always bring your following with you. And your yeah. skills. And your skills, yeah. Right? You like better, you, you, and if you, you, can if you get amazing platform. at making yeah. YouTube videos yeah. at, from an editor, yeah. and YouTube blows up, yeah. it goes away, like it's gone. Elon Musk buys it and shuts down the platform. Great. You know how to make killer videos. Exactly, yeah. There's going to be something else that then you can else. apply your skills to. Exactly. So if Instagram and YouTube <clears throat> went away, I could take my skills and bring it somewhere else mm -hmm. because I've spent all that time honing that skill and getting good at it. Mm -hmm. So the Paul brothers come from shut down Vine to YouTube and destroy it mm -hmm. because they had an audience, but they had the skills. Yeah. Yeah. And so people would say, well, don't put all your eggs in the vine basket. Put all your eggs in the vine basket. And if it goes away, go crush somewhere else. Exactly. As opposed to having little pieces everywhere and, it, and you suck and in you every single platform. You never get good at anything. Yeah. You never get good at anything. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And it applies to not just social media, but everything. your life, life, your business. Life as well, yeah, yeah. And everything in life, relationships, Focus. whatever it is, like it could break up. You can. You can if you're trying it, to do like, 18 different diets at the same time, yeah, it's not gonna, <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, you're gonna suck at Keto all of them. It's hard enough. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> keto alone is hard enough. One is hard enough. One's to, hard enough. But to do exactly. one, but I, th I don't think people want to do one thing well. People yeah. get bored, and then it gets hard. Yeah. To get really good, you can get okay good quickly, and so it's fun, and you're learning a new thing. But, but to once get, it gets hard, it's to like, get mastery at something. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. People don't want to do that, and so you're like, what's the next thing? I, and I think then you never actually get gains anywhere. I agree. Absolutely agree. It's the best, best, best video editing software. What do you I, got? I use Adobe Premiere if you're on PC. Uh, Final Cut works great for Mac. And DaVinci Resolve is amazing for color. So it's pretty much those three are the industry standards nowadays. So I don't And know. I would say only listen to that answer if you want to be great at a video editing as your business. Yeah, that's true. I started in, um, well, it doesn't exist anymore, but Macromedia Flash, which was made for like presentations and stuff. And then now it's plopped like pictures and videos. I think people focus on the wrong thing. Yeah. I started with Windows Movie Maker and then Camtasia. <laughs> yeah. Go back, that's my first video. Really. But here's the thing, this is the problem. But I love Bo. Bo, Bo, Bo's amazing. Bo's, yeah, Bo's, yeah. Amazing. Bo's, cool. Bo's Bo's come out to the workshop. He's coming to the next yeah. one. He's leading the session for us. Yeah. Bo asks great questions, and Bo has He's a way a of too. has a way of getting the people yeah. that that I haven't seen before. Bo, yeah. Bo, we got to get this guy to see. Oh, Bo, we we'll talk here. <laughs> Arnold, Arnold, we got to get him to see Arnold. But but Bo should not be worrying about editing software. Should not be worrying about what the best is because Bo should not want to be the best editor. Right. Right. It's not a good use of time. This is what frustrates me about a lot of thought leaders is you spend 20 minutes recording a video, practicing your message, and hopefully get that down to a five minute video, 20 minutes of recording it, and then you spend four hours editing it. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You're spending way more time on the scale that you don't want to be the best in the world at Instead of focusing on, hey, I want to be a great speaker. Mm -hmm. Right, I want to be a great thought leader. So, so you should I, be working on how to speak. Yeah, spend those four hours. That. Yeah. It should be flipped. Yeah. It should be four hours practicing so that you learn how to give a good fire five minute piece of content. Because mm -hmm. that's a skill you take forever into mm -hmm. whatever platform comes up next. Yeah. It serves you for life. But the editing skill is not something that you want to be world class at. Mm -hmm. So you want to spend 20 minutes on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're using editing to save you from not being a great speaker. Yeah. Which is why when I speak, it's one, one or two takes, five minutes, <laughs> post, don't even think about it. But yeah, absolutely. But I'll spend like hours and hours editing. 
and, and practicing. Like nobody's coming to you for your editing skills mm -hmm. and you don't want to be a great editor. Now I respect, that's why I have Danny, you know, like I respect the craft. I think it's important. I think what Danny can do is amazing and definitely miles ahead of whatever I could ever do <laughs> ever. <laughs> but I can't speak like you. Period. I can't be like you. So, but how do you get to talk? Well, that's great. Like you hired an, how do you get to hire an editor? You have to be great at the thing that you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. You, you will never get to hire a Danny if you are spending four hours editing a video and 30 minutes recording it. Yeah. You just, you'll never get, you'll never build your business up high enough mm -hmm. because you're not spending enough time on the craft that will actually get you noticed, which is your speaking or your singing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or your rapping or you're playing the piano mm -hmm. or whatever videos you're making. Mm -hmm where it's better to spend all that time learning how to be able to make a great five to 10 minute piece of content of you just speaking in one take mm -hmm. so that you don't need a lot of editing. Yeah. That's the skill to work on. Yeah. And then you get noticed and then you can hire an editor to make it look even better and mm -hmm. bring in motion graphics and fancy music and yeah. intro and outro and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Focus on, on your that. craft. That's, that's very Spend true. your time gold. on your craft. Absolutely. And yeah. not all the related stuff. 100%. Yeah. You got to yeah. get good. Back to the mastery question. You got to get good at it. You got to be a master at something. Yeah. And spend your time on that. And it goes back to the diversity question. Do you diversify? Do you, you know, double down on something? Um, as an editor, I don't focus on visual effects and stuff like that because that's a whole other career. I, I focus on what I'm good at, which is telling the story, which is in editing. So I don't go and I don't try to overwhelm myself with, you know, how do I compose green screens and imaginary dragons flying across the screen and, and things like that. Like I work on telling my stories. I'm going to eventually hire someone to do that for me. We definitely need some dragons flying, <laughs> dragons in flying. some of our videos, Danny. I'm and then you'll be coming to our videos. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed we don't have dragons flying around. <laughs> so yeah, no, that, that's absolutely true. I 100% agree. You want to be an entrepreneur with going to the military be a good move? I know nothing about the military, okay. except that maybe it can help. My only assumption is that it can help build a strong mindset and help you also build a good physical. I think phys uh, having a healthy physical lifestyle helps you being an entrepreneur. I think uh, taking care of your body is a big part of taking care of your mind. Take care of your mind. You can think better. You can operate better. So, I mean, that's the only benefit I can think of, but I don't really know anything about the military, so I, I'm not too sure how to answer that question. Yeah, I mean, so I'm not, I'm not in the military either. I haven't done service. We don't have to do service in Canada. Yeah. And, and we're, so we're in Canada. Yeah. And, and the Canadian military is also not, like, a huge yeah. part of the culture. Yeah. Um, that being said, whenever you want to learn something, go learn from the people who are doing the thing. Could you learn how to be an entrepreneur and take some of the skills? Right. Absolutely. Right. But could you learn how to be an entrepreneur from an entrepreneur? Yeah, way better. Yeah. Right? Like, if you want to learn, uh, you know, how to, how to eat right, you want to learn how to take care of your body, is joining the military going to help you? Probably. But you could probably get there a lot faster by going to a nutritionist and a personal trainer. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's right? just, dude, does that translate into what you want to do? So I think a lot of it will translate, but it's just so, it's, you're not actually hitting the target. Yeah. You're shooting an arrow and you're hitting like all around the target instead of going to the target. Yeah. So can you learn? Yes. But is it, is it the best use of your time? Probably not. Right. Like I would try to go work for an entrepreneur if that's your ambition. Right. And what if it's a necessity for people? So like the military's like, it's an option for a career. It can make them a little bit of money. It can get them some free education. Would yeah. you say that? I think if you want to be an entrepreneur, I wouldn't go to the military. Okay. If you want a career, yeah. if you love your country, if you love the idea of defending freedom and you get an education and, then it's I, and you love the brotherhood or sisterhood and you right. love the discipline and you, you know, you love being in shape all the time and all of the stuff that you'll get from being in the military, yeah. you love pride, you love your country. Great. That's why you go to the military. But going as a building block to build your own entrepreneurship is not a good idea, is what you're saying. I think, I think it's just a slow path. Right. Go direct. Okay, yeah, I see that, yeah. Just I go agree. direct. Yeah. Like, if you wanna learn video editing, go work for video editor. Mm -hmm. 
you could learn a lot doing some, I don't know, <laughs> where it's video kind of, you know, like if you came and worked for me doing, uh, you know, outreach for my tour or something, but you really wanted to be a video editor, you'll learn a little bit. Like you'll hang around Danny, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll see how we do some videos, mm -hmm. but you'll spend most of your time doing how to run a tour. Yeah. Because that's what you were hired to do. Yeah. Where it's better to go work for somebody who is a full-time video editor mm -hmm. and go learn from them. You'll just learn so much faster. Yeah. Like in three months, you'll learn what you can learn in four years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what you want. <clears throat> yeah. So aim for like the major goal. Just that's hit the target. Saying. Hit the target. Hit that major goal instead of hitting the goals that can keep you around it, I guess. Like what you're saying. Yeah. Just don't hit around it. How do you differentiate your product from your competitors, Danny? What do we got? Uh, <laughs> Let's get some value this, here. This might just be for videographer. I don't know. Maybe no, it's you can not. It all it applies out. everywhere. Um, for me, it's just, I, th I think if you just put your passion into your work, it will be different. I think when you try to copy everybody else and you try to just look at everything else and be like, I'm going to do footprint everybody and put it into you know, one piece of work, it doesn't, you, you lose that personal touch. I think when you, when you love something and you put your passion and your love into it, it just, it will just be. Like, I don't think you just try to think about, hey, what's my, what's my style like? I don't think you ever think about that. I think you just do it and then you realize, oh, wow, okay. So this is my style and through time it just kind of evolves. It might change, it might, you know, go a different way. But at the end of the day, I think that's how you differentiate. I think you just have to worry about getting the work done and, and, and putting love into it. Nice. Yeah. I think, uh, I think at the beginning you should copy and steal everything. I think, I think if you're in video, you should, you should look at Steven Spielberg and the Netflix but guys. But that, that's and, influence though, rather than copy. No, I would like straight up copy. Really? I would straight up, no, at okay. the beginning. Okay, okay. At the beginning, I would straight right. up like, when you're just, like Steven first Spielberg fresh. did this, yeah. I wanna do that. And okay, straight yeah. up do the exact try, you won't. You, you won't because you it. suck yeah, at the beginning. Yeah, of course. But, but you try and then you see like, okay, just like when you go to art school, they say, you know, draw this picture. Mm -hmm. And you try and you do your best. Um, I, I, think, I think that's good. I think that helps you figure out what you like doing. Mm -hmm. I think if you saw some effect on a new Netflix show, like, wow, it's really cool how they did that. I wanna try doing that. It doesn't mean that that becomes your style, but, but you try it. And I think that gets you, yeah. I think that gets you 80% of the way. Yeah. And then you see, did I, did I enjoy that? Right, yeah. Ultimately, you can't just be a copy because then you're just a junior version of somebody else. Exactly, yeah. But it gets you 80% of the way. Yeah. This is a great cl clip that we had in uh, a 50 Cent Top 10 where people were submitting, because 50 Cent now puts on other artists, like he produces other artists. Mm -hmm. So people were submitting their demos to him. And he said, man, you're like, you sound just like Lil Wayne. Mm -hmm. like, Exactly like Lil Wayne. Hmm. Like if I like you had Lil Wayne here and this guy and I close my eyes like it's the same, same guy. But we already have a Lil Wayne. Exactly. Exactly. We don't, we don't need a your Lil Wayne impersonator. Yeah. We yeah. don't need a Lil Wayne exactly. impersonator. Yeah. But all the stuff that you learn by copying Lil Wayne, now you need to find that final twenty percent to make it your own. Yeah. And so that's where people ultimately will find success. And so people people message me all the time like hey this guy copied your top 10 idea it's like mm -hmm. okay great I, I spend zero time thinking about people who are copying yeah, their stuff yeah. it's only forward looking never rear view mirror absolutely looking backwards yeah but for them to win if they're just doing them if they're just copying me they're good they're gonna lose because mm -hmm. you can't out evan evan yeah you got to find your own thing you have to yeah so if you're gonna make your your own top 10 rules video awesome you need to bring something <clears throat> different to it mm -hmm. otherwise mm -hmm. You're gonna lose. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you're like copying, like for example, Spielberg. Um, if a Spielberg idea comes out, you're always gonna be Junior Spielberg. It's always gonna go to Spielberg. You know, it's never. You're always gonna be that person underneath somebody else, right? Um, you're an Elvis impersonator. Exactly. Yeah, you're an Elvis impersonator. Exactly. And you can still make money. Elvis impersonators yeah, make money. You can. You can. Yeah. The best you can Elvis jobs. impersonators get jobs and make yeah, money. Yeah, you can get jobs. You can. You can. You, you can be the best copycat. But I just feel like it's, it's but, not. But it's not Elvis. It's not you. It's not, it's not a, it's no, almost but, like so it's, it's not a, a. But it's a piece of you, but you, they haven't done the work to find the final 20%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So, so I love the idea of copying at the beginning, but then, then you, you have to figure out a way to make it your own. Find a fine line between copy and influence, would you say? Well, if I just flat out copy somebody, it, it, won't, it won't move the needle like an original idea would. Mm -hmm. But the, the original is just a tweak of a copy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So whether you call it copy or influence. Well, I mean, like, like for me, if I, if I saw a shot that I saw in the, like a Netflix TV series or something that I like. Yeah. I'd try to copy it yeah. by saying, oh, he used the jib and then they used this kind of color palette and then they right. did this and did this. I'd do it exactly the same type of uh, skeleton almost. I'd take, oh, this is what I need the tools to do and I'll do it. But at the end of the day, how I apply it to my story is that, is that other 20%. Yeah. How, how it goes and the speed it runs and, and how I direct the actors are two different things. Right? And I think that's the 20%, whereas I think you're talking 80% is Okay, what tools do I need? How do I do it? And how do I plot? And, I, and just the idea. Yeah, just the idea. Oh, yeah. Oh, the idea a of a skeleton like coming out of, uh, of yeah. <laughs> the back room. That's cool. That's that, cool. Yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> With yeah. one green eye, you know, yeah, okay, yeah. let's try that. How did you make that green eye float? Imaginary you know? dragon. <laughs> right? <laughs> Flying behind. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing that can really help is when you understand, so I call it one word, but or your value, when you bring that to your your craft, whatever you're mm -hmm. selling, it mm -hmm. makes a difference because you want people to feel an emotion when they're working with your business, not just buying an end result. That's very important. Yeah. So, so for me, it's believe. All of my content is believe, is positive. You could, somebody could try to copy the way that I do things, but they can't because they don't feel, they don't feel the thing that I feel when I'm making my videos. You, mm -hmm. you feel your thing, great. You can copy the technique, but you can't copy the heart behind it. Mm -hmm. So that's why it will always fall short, because you have to find your heart. Yeah. Because if you're singing a Lil Wayne song, Lil Wayne will sing it way better, because he's got the heart, because those words mean something to you, or to him, while to you, you're just copying somebody else. Yeah. You can't fully copy somebody's value over, their heart over. Um, so the series that Danny's making for me called Becoming, his one word is become. And it's trying to tell the story of people who are trying to become something more, something mm -hmm. greater, something better. And so that is the magic sauce that only Danny can bring that nobody else can. Yeah. So you should watch his videos and feel like you want to become more. Yeah. That's a success for Danny. Mm -hmm. Where for other people, that, that's not the benchmark. Awesome. So figure out what it is that you stand for and then are people feeling that in every interaction? Every time they email you, they see your social media content, they interact with somebody on your team, they buy your product, they look at your product, they're using your service, like you want them to feel something. And when you can figure that out, when, when they have an emotion attached to working with your company, that's when you actually really start to win and send out versus your competitors. How do you oh, be yourself a, when you've got fear? That's a little question. Um, how to be yourself when you got fear? That's a long, like, that's a, like, yeah, a broad it, Danny. question. <laughs> um, to be honest, I, I... The heavy-hitting questions on the Danny Nevin I find I find a way to express myself in any way that I can. Whether that's by myself, writing into, like, a journal. Whether that's recording myself in, in, on IG and telling a story. Whatever it is, I think you have to find time for yourself. I think when you find way to be, a way to be more comfortable with, with yourself, you begin to discover yourself a little bit more, and it kind of slowly kind of picks away at that fear. For me, like when I was growing up, I, I grew up with a lot of fear. Like I hated who I was, you know? And, and so for me, um, I wrote a lot. Okay. And I had this giant like journal on my computer or on a piece of paper, like whatever was there and accessible to me at that point, I would just write and sometimes it won't make sense. It won't be about my day necessarily, but just about my emotions and, and how I feel, right? And it wouldn't make any sense and I'd go back to it and I'd be like, wow, like I thought those things, like that's crazy. But it, it really helped me discover myself. What was one of the ones that you, you look back and say, wow, I thought that, that was crazy? Oh man, I had one on a piece of paper, which I don't think I have anymore. Okay. Um, but it was really, really dark. Like it was just like a lot of anger and a lot of like frustration and like, it was bad. <laughs> so they're like, how could someone break my heart like this? And, okay. and then it'd be like, you know, I'd be talking about what if I disappeared and like no one would ever miss me and stuff like it just really, really dark. Okay. And, and I remember I look back and I'm like, wow, like I could go there. Okay. Right. So when I look back, I kind of discovered that part of me, like 
how am I feeling today? I'm not feeling that today, but I can go there. Yeah. And I figured that up about myself. So then I kind of, in that, in that sense of like learning about myself, I learned how to be a little bit more, less fearful of who, of who, who I can be. Because I think a lot of times when you go that, to those dark areas, you're, half of it is shock, right? It's almost like, I can't believe like these emotions, like I can't believe I'm in this situation. I can't believe I feel these things. So when, when, when you know that you can, you're more aware and you're almost like almost more prepared to kind of stop it before it happens. Mm-hmm. Like, hold, hold, hold on, you're getting there again. Like you're, you're going there again. Oh my God, you're writing these words again. You know, and you kind of find a way to, to kind of stop yourself in, in a way. It, it, even if it's not stop, maybe perhaps slow down the process or make it a little bit easier for yourself. And then through time, I think building up that self-confidence, you learn how to control who you are, both emotionally and physically. And when you learn how to control who you are, you learn how to control the fears. And that, that makes you more comfortable being yourself. And next thing you know, it's like, I don't think there's a one answer. There isn't this one thing that you can do, like meditate and fear is gone or work out and fear is gone. I think it's, it's a process. Uh, so but your process was to express yourself. The process, to express, yeah. So I'm going to write it. But, but do you feel like that just released it? Like it was a way to get the, the pain or the, the like anger mm-hmm. out so it's not in your system? Mm-hmm. Or do you also feel like it helped you grow and become better? I think it helped me grow, for sure. Because I think both, for sure. I get the first one. How, yeah. did, how did the writing out, like, nope, the world would miss me or wouldn't miss me if I was gone? And mm-hmm. how, would, how did that help you grow? Um, I think just the fact that I was able to, like I said, like, I think I, I looked at it and I learned, like, through time. Like, maybe not at that very moment that I wrote it. But when I looked back, I realized how dark I can be right, and how, how deep my mind can go, that I, I kind of told myself, like, I, I don't want to feel that again. But you look, you, so, you, so like, say it's a year later, yeah. you look back and you say, wow, I can't believe I wrote that, holy cow, mm-hmm. I've grown so much yeah. since then, I know I can go there, and I'm so grateful that I'm not there anymore. Yeah. So you have grown yeah. in that year, yeah. but did the writing help you grow? I think if I didn't write it down, I wouldn't have that moment, right? You wouldn't have you wouldn't have known that you've made the growth possibly. Yeah. But did the writing facilitate the growth? You know yeah. what I'm asking? It, kind of. Like, is the writing <laughs> it down? What I'm trying to get at is the yeah. expression actually helping you. Like, did it lead to you growing? Mm-hmm. Or is it just a benchmark to say, "Holy cow, I have grown." Maybe it isn't the thing. Yeah. That helped me. Grow. Like, what helped you grow? What helped you get to? a year later or five years later, or however long it was, that you said, holy cow, um, I'm not that person anymore. I think it's just through life experience. I mean, uh, it, it's like one of those things where like... But you had positive life experience. It could have been, it could have been negative. It could, right. it could have been worse. Like you right. could be in, some, in a jail right but now. See, see, for me, like the reason why I wrote it down was because a lot of t- I didn't have anyone to talk to yeah. at that time or I didn't trust anybody yeah. to, talk, to express those feelings f- with, right? Yeah. And I think when, when you go with somebody that it's, it's even worse when you think you trust somebody and you talk to them and they, they either ridicule you or they don't listen or they, they make you feel smaller yeah. because you feel that way. So for me, having those trust issues, writing it down yeah, 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 yeah. was the action that but, helped well, me. What, what led to the growth? Like five years later, when you look back and you say, holy cow, I'm not that person anymore. Um, <sighs> what life experiences? Jeez, that's, that's, that's tough. I, I, I can't pinpoint anything. <laughs> uh, I can't pinpoint anything, but all I know is that like, I looked back and I reread those things, so yeah. maybe just the simple action of writing it down, kind of journaling your journey in a way, kind of helped me. I don't know if that answers your question. I'm not too no, sure. No, I'm but, just curious. So for yeah. me, uh, I didn't know where you're going to go with that question. Yeah. So it was, it was exciting to pull that thread a bit. Yeah, I I definitely see the connection to. I think you need to have a a, a, a valve to release the pressure, yes. whether that's writing, whether that's uh, singing, or like all the great music a lot of it comes from moments of pain and frustration yeah. and they pour their heart out and then they have this amazing song mm-hmm. uh, or it's video editing or whatever mm-hmm. um, i think i don't know how much that helps you solve that problem and grow but having a release is definitely helpful mm-hmm. for me overcoming fear starts with the action okay you, you gotta do something yeah 
And so I, I have an expression where I try to inoculate myself against judgment. Inoculate yourself against judgment. So it's usually not fear that, it's not fear of doing something, it's fear of doing something in front of somebody else. It's fear of failure, it's fear of being judged by somebody else. And so the more that you can catch yourself playing small based off of somebody else's opinion or potential opinion of you, then you have to go off and do that thing. Or think so many entrepreneurs have these big visions for what they want to do, but they can't even do like this simple thing. Mm -hmm. So as an example, uh, filming in public. There's a, a guy, Instagram follower of mine, who posted a video and tagged me where he's at a grocery store. And he's like, one of my mentors, Evan, uh, challenged me to, to film out in public. And I'm, I'm terrified of this. Mm -hmm. So here I am doing it. Woohoo! <laughs> right? And, and it, was, it was good. I mean, yeah. is it the greatest thing of all time? No. Did it suck? No. Yeah. But more important is releasing, like, you've done it. Yeah. When you've done it, then you can do it again. Yeah. And you can do it again. You get better. Yeah. And if you filmed every day at the grocery store, he would get better. But I have a question about that. Yeah. So if somebody does that, right, yeah. just because, so say just because in their head, because you told them to do it. Okay. Do they still grab value from that if they don't fully understand why they're doing it? To them, it's just embarrassing themselves. You know, like, I'm going to go do it because Evan pushed me to do it in the morning show, but I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm just doing it because he told me to do it. And I just feel all those feelings of embarrassment. Do you, well, do you think okay. it's still valuable? If, if somebody's doing something because I told them to do it, yeah. but they don't understand the connection, then I suck. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> okay. Danny, go do this. Yeah. It'll help you. And you don't know how it's going to help you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I suck right okay. now. To be fair, I might even I might throw that in occasionally with like Alex or something. Yeah, yeah. I like I might actually give you that yeah, yeah. just because. Yeah, yeah. But it's part of an ongoing. Yeah, like yeah. we'll come back even if you don't get it, we'll come back to it. Yeah. But not some person that is on Instagram. So it, it was it was for him. He wants to be a thought leader. He wants to be a speaker. Right. But he's afraid of getting in front of the camera and sharing his message, and right. and he can do it in his condo or whatever. But. Mm -hmm. Great, you have to be able to, like, how are you gonna speak on a stage full of people, 10,000 people watching you, mm -hmm. if you can't speak into a phone at a grocery store? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you need to solve that problem first. Yeah. And you work your way up. Yeah. Because if you get on that huge stage, you'll freeze up. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think, I think that is actually the answer, is mm -hmm. finding these little micro moments of potential judgment and then going off and doing that thing. Yeah. I think that's how you actually win. It's going into the weight room and lifting five pounds and not trying to lift a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So for him, it was talking to the grocery store and he feels the win and celebrate the effort, not the result, right? right. Like, yeah. was it a great video? No, but he did it. It's like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Crediting yourself. Right? Even here, when I first started filming here at TDS, we're in a mall. People ask, is this a green screen? <laughs> it's not a green screen. We, we, <laughs> All back here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, wow. we, just, we just blur the background. <laughs> I'm like, well, why did you pick a shopping mall as a green screen? That's like, crazy. Because wow. we're in a shopping mall, it's not a green screen. <laughs> but when I first started filming in here too, I remember being worried about, oh my gosh, there's people walking behind me. Mm -hmm. They can't hear me, but they see me filming video. Yeah. Now I have to do it. If I ever feel that judgment, then I have to go off and do that thing. Mm -hmm. Even if I don't care about that thing. Mm -hmm. Because growing through the judgment is so character building mm -hmm. that it'll help you tackle so many other problems in the future. Yeah, yeah. Right, like when I got my nails painted. Yeah. I didn't want to get my nails painted. Yeah. But because I was worried about judgment and people thinking, wow, he got his nails painted, then right. I had to go off and get my nails it's painted. Not, it's not about the nails, it's about the fear of judgment. Exactly. Yeah. And so you want to inoculate yourself against judgment. Yeah. And so as soon as you find yourself doubting yourself or playing small because of how somebody is going to react to you, then you have to go off and do that thing. And take action towards that thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, you, you want to ask a girl out or you want to ask yeah. a girl for her phone number. Uh, and you're, you're nervous or afraid, yeah. now you have to go do now it. you gotta go do it, yeah. Even if you don't like her anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if it's a major rejection. Yeah, even if it's a no, yeah, right? Just no, do it, yeah. and then if she says no, it's like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it happens like that, no, but no. yes. <laughs> no, that's how I would do it. That's how I would do it. Yeah. It's like, yes, because I did it. Because you don't reward yourself for the effort. Yeah. Uh, sorry, you don't reward yourself for the, for the outcome, it's the effort. Yeah. The only thing that matters is the effort. Because mm -hmm. you keep putting the effort, you will win. 
So that's, people are worried. They go ask the girl out for their phone number, and, and she says no. And like, oh, my God, I feel like crap. Like, yeah. This is amazing. <laughs> I did this scary thing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, and then you can yeah. do it again. And if you keep asking for phone numbers, you'll get one, yeah, yeah. right? And you'll get better at it. Yeah. And then you'll lose the fear of asking somebody for their phone number yeah. or, or whatever, X, Y, Z. Even me doing this tour, yeah. I'm, I'm afraid nobody's going to show up in each yeah. of the cities, right? Yeah, yeah. And then I got to do, I got to not just live at once, I got to re repeat it every four days <laughs> yeah. for 90 days, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Every four days for 90 days, I have yeah. to re relive my nightmare. <laughs> but because I'm afraid of that, as soon as I caught it, here's the thing, most of the time you won't catch it. Mm -hmm. When my agent first said, you should do a, a paid tour, I was like, no, I don't want to do a paid tour. Like, not everybody can afford to come to an event. And I'm talking to myself down from it. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as I caught that, a good chunk of the reason is I'm just afraid. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, man. So you knew right away. Now I have to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you knew. Now I have to do it. Because yeah. when, when it's, I think we subconsciously play small. You just play small by default. Mm -hmm. But when you catch yourself playing small, then what do you do? Yeah. That's super important. Yeah. If you want to ask the girl out, but you don't ask her out, and, you, and it's because you're afraid, and you catch that you're afraid, mm -hmm. now you're training yourself. I'm the kind of person. Who doesn't. Who doesn't, who who's doesn't, afraid yeah. and then doesn't take action. Who doesn't follow up. And that's yeah. so dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Because it builds your character, which then And I, I don't, I, I, if I'm afraid of something yeah. and I catch it, yeah. then I have to go off and do it. Yeah, yeah. So I have to go off and do this tour. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So that's how you overcome the fear, mm -hmm. is through action. I like the idea of also having a, 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 a ventilation system. Mm -hmm. Right, of having a, whether it's writing or singing or but dancing. But then the next or, step should be taking or, or, action. Or breaking something yeah. or, you know, like. <laughs> Shouldn't break just, too just, many things, but. Just, yeah. Yeah. Don't hurt yourself or <laughs> don't others. Don't hurt yourself or others, yeah. yeah. Cardboard boxes. <laughs> you know, like Pillows. Feathers. <laughs> Bang the pillow on the wall. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. Just to release it, because it's not healthy to just kind of keep it inside and have that, that yeah. poison. But then, but then action, like what are you going to do? so that you're not afraid of that thing anymore. And then the more you conquer those little fears, it allows you to conquer bigger and bigger and bigger. I don't think you're ever done. I think, mm -hmm. I think no, whoever you look at, they're still afraid of something. I don't think you can ever not be fearful in your life. I think you're always gonna have fears. You're just able to no conquer bigger things. Yeah, you're just able Some to people are afraid things. to get out of bed. Yeah. Some people are afraid to open the closet door. Yeah. You know, and, and other people are afraid to save their city. You yeah. know, or, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. You just, you just start, being able to handle bigger and bigger, bigger things. If you want to learn more about Danny's story and also help him get to his hero, Arnold Schwarzenegger, check out the video link right next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. My one word is become. I used to struggle a lot with uh, self-identity and I've always trying to become something else.